Well, here we are, just a few days away from Passover, and uh, I'm prepared. I've gotten rid of the grains that we're not supposed to have with us, and they are five, wheat, barley, rye, spelt, and oats. And um, I miss the oats. This also means I can't have white vinegar because it's made from grain. And I can't have mustard because it's made with white vinegar. And the only thing I have left is some homemade sourdough bread and biscotti cookies I made. But I don't know if I'm getting company this week before Passover. And so if they don't come by Friday, because Passover is sunset Friday, then I can't eat it because I, I'm on this big new vegan diet now, so I'm going to have to bury it in the yard, not my yard, but the part of the yard next to the street that belongs to the county. Anything, if nothing else, following all these commandments is really very stimulating for the brain. Can you imagine the details and all the things you have to think of? Besides that, listen to this. It's customary and it's a very noble, beautiful custom for the firstborn, male or female, to fast on the day before Passover. So that means Friday, but since I have people in my family that are firstborn, <laughs> um, they don't know this, but I fast for them. <laughs> So that means I'm fasting. This is just daytime. I'm fasting for three days. So today it'll be like 13 hours. So that means today and tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, just in the daytime. Anyway, it's all very interesting. And surprisingly, it's all very healthy. Now, um, I had to do a lot of searching online to get some matzahs that were not, you know, overly priced. So I got these uh, on the Walmart website. So it's five one pound boxes. And you have to be careful. It can't just say kosher. It has to say kosher for Passover. And um, so this came out to like $3 a box because there are places that are charging uh, $5 a box and over. And the good thing is after Passover, they put all this stuff on sale and you can get it really economical. And since at night I give my dog like a crunchy snack for his teeth and his chewing. So, you know, it doesn't matter that I have all this extra because I just, I could give that to him at night. What else? <clears throat> um, the whole point of this, I think, is to remember what our ancestors went through, how they were slaves in Egypt, and how they left Egypt, and they were in such a hurry, they didn't have time for their dough, their sourdough, to raise, so the bread ended up being flat like a cracker, you know, just like these. Now, the only ingredients here are unbleached, unbromated, Passover wheat flour. Now, the reason that this wheat is different from regular wheat is because they don't let it near moisture or water because as soon as water comes in contact, you know, remember your sour bread, uh, not sour bread, sourdough bread recipes, you know, the, the dough collects yeast from the air and then that makes it rise. So um, it's, it's commanded to rest on the first day of Passover and on the seventh day of Passover. And some people, they're used to being busy and they don't like that, but think of the meaning behind this. Being a slave in Egypt or, or anywhere, you don't rest ever. You work seven days a week, probably even seven nights. So this represents freedom. We're free, and the, the Sabbath, or these holidays where we have a day of rest like the Sabbath, 
it, it reminds us of freedom. It's a gift. It's an inheritance. And anybody can start doing these things. I mean, according to the prophets in the end of the world, everyone is going to be following all, all this, this culture and commandments and holidays and rejoicing. So think about that. And I hope this video is watchable. I'm doing it on my iPhone. I have the iPhone uh, attached to an old uh, lampstand, but uh, it's okay.